this is the third in a series of tutorials that we plan to train people to use the TaxonWorks interface. So in this tutorial, we're going to add a, a new species name and associated sort of taxonomic, taxonomic information. Just a reminder that, that we have some useful resources in a, in a folder on a Google Drive. There is a, uh, at this link, there is a, a manual for uh, taxon works that continues to be a work in progress, but we've, we've spent quite a bit of time on it. And, and then there's also a checklist of activ activities associated with adding a new, a new species name, uh, which is very pertinent to what we're going to be doing this morning. So this is the taxon works interface. Uh, just by way of a brief review, it is divided up into data cards, which are uh, data tables, and uh, tasks, which uh, enable you to do, uh, to do uh, certain things. Another basic distinction in taxon works is between uh, taxa or taxonomic names and information associated with, with sort of the taxonomic uh, history of a name, and then OTUs, which stands for Operational Taxonomic Unit, which old timers like me remember goes back to the days of phonetics. And this is really a concept of a taxon. It's where all the other information associated uh, with say a species is aggregated. So we're gonna be concentrating today on, in this tutorial uh, on, on taxonomic names, taxa space as Matt Yoder calls it. And in the next tutorial, number four, uh, we're going to create an OTU associated with the species name and then uh, add uh, more information to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull up the source that we're going to be working on. Sources are publications, or primarily publications in, in, in Taxon Works. And so this paper is by Wu et al., that we're in the source hub, which is a, a, a task that uh, aggregates all kinds of useful things associated with, with sources or publications. So we're gonna do this publication here, a new species of uh, Salaphagus from China. And uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do, you can get to the PDF here. You can either download it or open it in a PDF reader. Uh, but the first thing I'm gonna do is go up here to this little pin icon in the upper right corner and I'm gonna put this uh, a paper in my pin board. And so if I open up my pin board now, this is, this, this is a place where all sorts of things are collected that you're gonna be using over and over. So now you see the little green bar to the left of Wu et al uh, a citation here, that indicates it's the default. So I don't have to, this will show up in many screens as we, as we curate information. And all I have to do is hit the little pin icon. I don't have to, I don't have to retype it. So just to show you, give you a quick look at the paper. It's in the Biodiversity Data Journal. Those are the authors. Uh, so they're describing a new species uh, in this genus of Incertity from China. It's a parasitoid, it's a parasitic wasp. So it, it's a parasitoid of that, that species of scale apparently on, uh, on a fig, Ficus concina. So we'll just scroll down through here. Here's the actual species description. We're gonna work with uh, each of these elements as we, as we work through it. Here's the type material, the holotype, three paratypes. Here uh, is a plate and, and this explicitly says this is the female holotype. So we're gonna paste that in. And then there's another plate that just says male. Now it's probably a paratype, but we don't know which one. So I'm gonna put this in and attach it to an OTU in the next tutorial. Then there's a taxonomic diagnosis, uh, something about the etymology of the name that refers to the collecting locality, of course, uh, its biology. And then they compare it with four uh, species, other species in the genus here. And we'll add uh, uh, some of this today. At, I mean, some of this in tutorial three and some of this in tutorial four to the, to the OTU. So as they say, let's get started. 
I'm going to go back to the sort of home base here. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new uh, taxon. So we scroll down here to new taxon name. Okay, so first of all, there's the name and probably safest if I cut and paste this out of the, out of the publication. Wantsiensis, and then the parent, the taxon to which it belongs to is Silifagus ashmead. Now there, it's a sort of a quirk or something unique to the UCD database that when a lot of information came over, a taxonomic names just came over as strings. And so they're what we call ghosts. So we wanna pick the, the, the name here that has the, uh, all the information uh, associated with it, author and date, et cetera. So that's the parent. It asked me now what rank, you, you know, it could be a subgenus, it could be any, any of these things. This, this is a species. So we create, we create the name. Now, the next thing we probably want to do before we forget is put the LSID identifier uh, for this name in here. Now, in this case, they, they don't give us the actual LSID, but they do give us a link to uh, Zoll Bank. So let's see if we can get this to work. There we are. Okay, so here is the uh, here is the LSID for the species name. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, copy that. And then we put that uh, here. You see that the name that we've created is up here in the upper right. And there's a little radial annotator here. And we're gonna pick identifier. So this is a this is a, an identifier for the species. It's an LSID, so it's global. On all as well, okay? So that's really the first thing. I usually do that right away because otherwise I'll forget. Now, notice the, the source is, it, you know, the, the, the paper in which this is described. And so I'm just gonna hit the pinboard icon here the pin icon, and it, and it just pastes it in there. Then I put the page numbers. Uh, in this case, it's three through six. Now the person, we can either clone it from the source, but in this case, it's just a uh, Wu that is the, that is the author of the, of the name. Wu Fei is his, his or her name. Okay, so I'm assuming it's this one. Uh, it's in the names table because I made sure it was in the names table. Uh, the when I uh, the people table when I when I entered the source. Okay, so that's the author. Now, uh, also uh, I, I point out up at the top here. There's a little auto save button which is clicked. So every once in a while, you might or might not hear it. There's a little chime that goes off that indicates that the information has been uh, saved. Uh, it, it's very reassuring. Okay, so we've got the source and the author now. We're gonna skip over status. The only thing you would you probably do here, uh, if you were entering a, a, a new species of a new fossil, you would, you would click fossil. This is not a fossil. Relationship, we're gonna skip over. That's, you know, that's something that comes later. The, but the original combination and rank here, it's very important. And, and notice that we can just set it as a current. Okay, so that, 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 that uh, uh, shows the current combination, the, the, you know, where the species was originally described. Classification, we're gonna skip over. The name is 
a noun in the genitive case. It's an ensis place name. And I'm just going to scroll down here to, uh, you're, not, you're not seeing this, but I'm on my other monitor, I'm scrolling down to the etymology section of the description. Sorry, James. What? Now, up above, you had the genus not specified when where original combination and rank in the bottom. Uh, now it's it's there. I think, okay. it's, I think it's corrected it now. Yeah, I don't know why first. It no, was... I, I don't. I don't either. Uh, but but <laughs> okay. it, it seems to have fixed it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw that and decided. Well, I'm not going to step in that hole. But you know, apparently, <laughs> apparently. <Great. it's>, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, I think that's all we do on on this on this screen. Uh, it's been auto saving, but you know I'm a compulsive of saver, so I'm going to save it. And now we're going to enter the information for the type types, actually type material. Now there are two forms here. There's a comprehensive form, which has all sorts of information. You know anything you'd ever want to know. You know, including lat long and all this other stuff. I usually just use the quick the quick form. Okay, so we've cleverly lost it. Give me a second here while we get back to it. There we are. So now we're at the browse nomenclature name for the uh, species name that we've created. And to get back to the editing the information for the name, uh, I click the little blue, a uh, little green pencil icon here in the upper right. And uh, we're back at the edit taxon name uh, page. So the first thing we've got is a holotype. Uh, it's designated, of course, in, in this paper as it, as, it, as it has to be. I'll just show you this again quickly. They provide information for a holotype and three different paratypes. So we're going we're gonna to enter the holotype and, and one of the, the, the paratypes just to, to save time. And then will probably be at a point where we can declare victory. So there's the information for the holotype. I assume these are all Darwin core fields. I guess that's what they are. Yes, they look, they look like that. Yes, they do. Okay, so, so uh, first of all, the holotype is designated on page three. His original is, you know, is the first time this was published, you know, it, it kind of redundant, but obviously it is, if it's a holotype. Then we go down to the collection object form here. And so a buffered collecting event is basically the label data. It's buffered in the sense that it hasn't been parsed out into all the different individual fields. So I'm just going to cut and paste this straight in there. There's one holotype. It's a pinned specimen. It's an adult female. Now the repository is stated uh, explicitly in, in the paper. It is Tianjin Agricultural University. The acronym that they give in the paper for that is T-J-A-U. And there it is. Okay. So that's the repository. If it's not in there, and sometimes it's not, then you, then you need to go to the repository table and, and add it. But in this case, it's, it's there. Now, one more thing we're going to do here, and that is they provide images of, there's a plate of figures for the holotype, and we're going to, we're going to uh, drop that in here to this depiction box. So notice that we've got this 
we've got this a box with a with a sort of dash margin around it. That's you can drag and drop images in there, or if you click on that, it'll go to your desktop. Uh, but I've already I've already taken screenshots of these, so there's the there's the image, and here's a place to uh, put the caption. I'm scrolling down to get the caption. So that's the holotype. We're gonna do, I think, one of the paratypes uh, and then I'll do the other two later. So we click new type for a new, new type specimen. This one is gonna be a paratype, same paper, same place. There's the collecting information. This is also a pin specimen. And this one is also an adult uh, female. And the repository is the same. Uh, Jim, you selected fossil compression. I just wanted to let you know. Thank you, Heidi. Now, the, now we got it right. Yeah, no, uh, don't be afraid to uh, point out when I make mistakes because I always do. So that's the, uh, the first paratype. Now, as I said in the paper, they have they have images of a male paratype, but we don't know which one it is. And uh, so uh, I'm going to attach that image to the OTU. In fact, it doesn't even say paratype. That's probably what it is, but we, we don't know for sure. So I'm going to attach that image to the OTU uh, for this species in the next tutorial. So now we've created the, the second type. And uh, we'll go back to the name now. Hey Jim, and... I, have, I have one correction. Uh, the name is not noun. It's an adjective. Everything ending with Kansas is adjective based on the geography. Okay, I thought that was a I thought that was a noun in the genitive case. I guess not. Well, thank you. Uh, so, so nice to have a commissioner uh, to. Uh, <laughs> To guide us through these things, I will. Uh, it's, it, you say it's an adjective, Dimitri? Yes, it is. Okay, I, I didn't know that. I somewhere I, I picked up that that was a that was in the genitive case, but I guess not. All right, because it does not decline. Well, I guess it, it does. does. Just a neuter. Yes. Declines a little bit. Declines. Yeah. Doesn't decline between masculine and feminine, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's why I thought it was a noun. All right. Well, thank you. We'll save that. Any other comments or corrections? There, you might have noticed before it went away that there was a little soft validation box down here, which is always good to check at the end here to make sure that we haven't forgotten. Uh, to do something, but in this case, it looks like we've hit all the right hit all the right buttons. Mm -hmm.